Welcome to Upfront for the month of July. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We decided to get out of the studio and out onto location, and we're starting in the town of Comox. Joining me on my far left is Stu Tunham, past president of the Comox Rotary. Beside him, Sue Wood, who is the executive director of the Comox BIA. And of course, beside her is Mayor Paul Ives for the town of Comox. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Now, we have a very exciting project that you guys have tackled here. We're standing in a new building. We're going to talk about that after. But the thing I'm really excited about is you've got a new splash park coming. We're really excited. We broke ground on that this week, and we're looking forward to its completion at the end of July, just in time for nautical days. So I think the kids are already getting pretty excited about it, as I'm sure the parents and the grandparents are. Uh, now, is it going to be just a splash park, but is it a playground as well? No, it'll be a combination splash park and playground. We're relocating some of the elements of the playground up at the top of the park and also adding new elements, so it'll be a really nice package uh, for the kids to enjoy. Okay. Now, how long has this been in the works? Well, the concept of a water park came uh, when I first got on council back in 2002. I'm sure it was talked about before that, but it really came to fruition over the last few years with some assistance uh, funding-wise from the Rotary, the BIA, as well as uh, federal and provincial uh, governments, which were involved in these buildings as well. Okay, awesome. Now, what is your favorite part? I think the favorite part here is it's going to bring vibrancy down to the waterfront, and that'll help the downtown businesses as well. You're already seeing that happen with these buildings, and, and once the water park and playgrounds open, uh, with the amenity space we've put down here, I think you're just going to see it uh, explode in terms of excitement and, and activity, and that's, that's the best part about it. Now, you mentioned it was going to be opening possibly by July 29th. Isn't that one week before nautical days? Yes, uh, that's what we're shooting for. We're wanting to make sure it's open uh, for everyone to see it, uh, open up and enjoy during the Nautical Days Festival where there's uh, literally thousands of people in the downtown Comox area with both Nautical Days and Philbrook Festival. So it'll be really uh, an opportunity to showcase it. Awesome. Now, Sue, you are the executive director of the BIA, but you also head up Nautical Days. How excited are you at this point? <laughs> Well, it's sort of like Christmas for me on all levels. Uh, the wonderful things that are happening down here, people are very interested. They're coming and exploring the park again. It's been here for a long time, but it's new for everybody right now. And for nautical days, you know, you get a splash park and a new playground, and you consider all of the kids and the fun that we've got going on. It's a huge asset for the festival itself. So we're really, really excited. Now, from the BIA perspective, what do you see the advantages being? Well, you know, everything uh, old is new again. And uh, we like uh, everything that's going on in Comox right now is very exciting. New builds, new pubs, new development, the mall, the waterfront. It's a very exciting time for Comox. This is, again, the icing on the cake. All right. So are you a splasher or a playgrounder? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it'd be super fun, and I'm going to be down here for sure because uh, the exploring and the doing and the, the just climbing the pirate ship is going to be a lot of fun. I may do it when nobody's looking, but uh, I am uh, all very excited about all aspects of it. Okay, awesome. Now, Stu, you are a past president of the Rotary, so you were involved like right in the thick of things with this project. What does the Rotary feel about this? Because you also have the two pavilions that you've built down here at the Marina Park. Well, the Comox Rotary Club has a long history of uh, contributing to the town of Comox and the Comox Valley as a whole. Uh, we've built a couple of the, of the pavilions down in the park here. Uh, we built uh, the senior center, Dest Air House. So we're really excited to do it again. We want to see um, uh, the park be improved. We want to see the town be improved. We want to be able to improve the lifestyles. Uh, of the uh, uh, families in the community. So we're really, really excited about it. Now, are you a splasher or a player? Uh, it depends on the day. <laughs> I think uh, some, yeah, that's right. Some <laughs> days are going to be splasher days and some days are going to be player days. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you have anybody that has kids that are starting to talk about this a little bit? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about it in the community, and people are getting really, really excited about it. Um, even just on Facebook this morning, I think uh, we got some great reactions uh, from families in the community. I shared Mayor Ives' uh, postings of the pictures on the Comox by the Sea Facebook page. And as of this morning, uh, there were 32 shares, and uh, almost 8,000 people reached. 
So <laughs> people huh? are, are really excited about okay. this project. Awesome. Well, thank you. You want to say something else? I should also mention that the, uh, some of the other Rotary Clubs in the Valley are also helping us out. The Strathcona Sunrise Rotary Club, the Courtney Rotary Club, and also the young professionals of oh, the great. Comox Valley are okay. making contributions. So it's a joint effort, um, lots of organizations helping. Okay. And Mary Ruth, if I could just mention that we have a very special fundraising initiative coming into play in the next couple of weeks. Um, this will give people from all over Comox Valley an opportunity to, sp to support Rotary okay. and make a splash in <laughs> Marina Park. Um, and we'll have more details on that on both uh, the BIA Facebook page, Rotary Facebook page, and certainly uh, press release and media announcement. Right. And I'm sure the mayor will tweet it out as well. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. We are going to take a short break. You're watching Up Front. We are on location in the town of Comox. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Upfront. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We're on location here in the town of Comox with Mayor Paul Ives. We are standing in one of two new buildings that are right down on the waterfront in front of the marina. How did this project come to be? Well, this project, these buildings are the culmination of, a, of an initiative that was started back in 2014. Okay. Council resolved to make some improvements to the uh, foreshore of Marina Park, create more community amenity space. So that set the ball in motion in terms of coming up with uh, some designs, going for funding at the federal and provincial level, okay. and then working with other partners to bring these buildings to fruition. And uh, they've been completed now for about a month and uh, looking forward to having them uh, being utilized to their maximum capacity over the next uh, number of years. Now, if somebody wanted to come and utilize the building, what's the process? What we've done is set up a booking uh, arrangement with our rec center uh, on, oh, with the rec center. Uh, on okay. Noel Avenue and, and uh, through the website as well, comox.ca, you can make uh, uh, inquiries. And so we're seeing quite a bit of interest in them already, everything from people wanting to do yoga classes, mm -hmm. of course, small weddings, uh, lots of activities. Uh, some of our summer day camps at the rec center will be uh, based out of here. Uh, oh, great, awesome. great location for it. Well, right beside the new Splash Park and Playground, so that's Absolutely. perfect. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay. Now, you mentioned your website, and that's fairly new, too, isn't it? Yeah, we upgraded our website about a year ago, and it's more user-friendly. Uh, lots of information on there at comox.ca for people to link into. Of course, they can link through to the rec center as well. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's something, again, trying to engage the public a little more proactively. We also do Facebook and some Twitter stuff, and we're looking to do more of that as we go along. And one of the things about the website is that you took a very different route than the other city in the city of Courtney, is you guys kept it local and you had a local developer do it for you. Yeah, we have uh, one of our volunteer firefighters who really uh, put the fire department on the map as far as social media and website okay. capabilities. And so we utilized his talents, of course, uh, paid for them as well to uh, come up with some uh, new improvements for our website. And we also had a committee of our council and staff working on yeah. What were the things that people wanted to be able to do? Mm -hmm. Everything from claiming a homeowner grant online right. to engaging and booking, uh, of course, uh, recreation programs. Now, uh, for these buildings, they are identical but mirrored, right? That's correct. Okay. These are the sale buildings, uh, that's what we're calling them. Um, they can seat up to 35 people inside in each one of them. Cool. And, of course, we have an outdoor covered space as well, which uh, can expand that capacity for bigger events and, right. and the opportunity to have more activity down here. And the reason we're in this one is the other one's being used today, okay, <laughs> which I yeah. was quite surprised. We walked up and there's people sitting around a table and looking at a screen, and I was like, wow, they're already in use. Pretty cool. Now, what was the um, thought behind the design? Was it just the nautical idea? Uh, cer certainly the nautical elements are key. Uh, the architect involved uh, was involved in the Forks development in Winnipeg and okay. uh, to create an open air space that could be used year round, of course, with some of the weather that we get here, making sure that there's both enclosed and outdoor space that's okay. covered and sheltered from the elements as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And really uh, to provide continued viewscapes through the park to the marina, you can see the big windows in here. And the way the, ba uh, the buildings are laid out offers that same opportunity. And you come down here on a sunny day, uh, already you're seeing lots of people gathered down here enjoying the fish and chips from the, the food truck here and uh, outside enjoying the amenities here during this time of year. Now, the other big build happening in Comox, of course, is the mall. Now, can you tell us what they're doing? Because it doesn't look at the moment like much has changed. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an interesting project at the mall. They're, they're demolishing some of the interior space where the former super value was, and they're opening that up to more of a, 
a street front presence. So when you go around to the back, you'll see a lot of work, but right now on the front of it, you can't see it. Okay. I had a tour through the inside the other day, and it, it'll be quite remarkable when it's done. And uh, you'll see some new tenants going in there, and just a new, uh, again, vibrancy to that, to that facility. The new owners have uh, really stepped up their game, and uh, they're going to, uh, I think, that bring it into, uh, into a, uh, a much more open air, um, open to the street concept that should work uh, for people in this day and age. So the, the current storefronts that are on Comox Ave, are those disappearing? No, those will stay, uh, the oh, ones on staying. Comox Ave. Uh, oh, okay. There's going to be some, hopefully some second floor tenants uh, moving in, uh, okay. maybe even a restaurant up there with some great views. Okay. And then around the back, you'll see uh, Dollarama will be in there. You'll see some other uh, tenants uh, with uh, storefronts on that side. And of course, John's Independent Grocer is still the anchor tenant. Yes, that'll, the back end. that'll okay. remain there. As and well. that's fairly newly renovated, isn't it? Like yes. His end. Yeah, that's okay. right. And the liquor store, of course, is there, and the okay. pharmacy is still there. Uh, and okay. there's some other tenants. Uh, I can't tell you who they are at the moment, but there will be uh, some new tenants in there that'll create some more activity for sure. And the Berwick build, how many suites are you adding in the Berwick? That uh, is another 34 suites. So uh, okay. adding to the 130 plus they have there now. Yep. Um, and I'm not sure exactly when they'll be open, but that uh, is uh, well underway. And uh, I would expect uh, later this year. So that one, it's not going to be a separate building, but it's going to be just an extension of the current building. That's right. It's an add-on. Yeah. All right. Great. So is there anything else that's going on? <laughs> that's a lot. Well, we've seen uh, lots of development inquiries. Uh, okay. Of course, we have the Lorne Hotel site uh, that's under new ownership. Mm -hmm. We're expecting new plans for that uh, development uh, sometime over the next few months. Oh, great. I know the Comox Legion is looking at a redevelopment as well. So right. those were identified a number of years ago in our community plan. There's also okay. uh, one that's being proposed right next to the golf course, uh, higher density yep. uh, building. Uh, again, our whole focus has been getting more people living downtown to right. support the businesses downtown. Right. And of course, this amenity space here is to uh, take advantage of that and, and okay. see the growth opportunity. Now, with the mall, are they talking at all about going up to add the density living capa capacity? I understand that uh, one of their projects in maybe a second phase will be to consider a residential component there attached right. to the mall, okay. uh, which make a lot of sense from a business point of view. Yeah, cool. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank really you. Really appreciate the, the update best. on the town of Comox. You've been watching Upfront. We've been down at the marina at the town of Comox. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We'll be back after this break. You're watching Upfront, I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We're on our Comox Valley Roundup and now we are in Cumberland in the council chambers with Mayor Leslie Baird. How are you today? I'm doing just fine, thanks for asking. Excellent. Now there is a lot of stuff happening in Cumberland, so what do you want to talk about first? Well, we're getting down to the end for our skateboard park. Awesome. And our jump park is coming along very nicely. The kids are just waiting. They're looking over that fence and they want to get at it. <laughs> It's taken so long to get to this point, about 20 years. Wow. Now, for those who don't live in Cumberland, where is the park? It's connected to the village park. Oh, okay. So there's the, the playground area for the children, the water yeah. park. And then there's the ball diamond. Then there's the dog park. And then you come to the skateboard park and then the jump park. Awesome. That's yes. fabulous. Now, one of the things that we see a lot of action on social media is the Cumberland Forest Society. They have been doing some amazing work for this community. They have been amazing. <laughs> They've been at it for 17 years. Wow. Raised a tremendous amount of money. Yeah. And their ability to raise money is amazing. And they've, they've given an, us an asset that our great-grandchildren are going to enjoy. Yes. Now, you have some major road construction going on. So let's talk about that. Yes, we have the entrance to the village that's being done now, okay. and um, it was started, and we're sort of in the middle of it, mm -hmm. but it will go until October, okay. and um, it's through traffic if you're going to go to one of the businesses, mm -hmm. but if you're not going to one of the businesses, we're asking you to use the detour, Okay. Uh, but those businesses are open, okay. so please don't hesitate to go through the barricades. Okay. Now, what are they actually doing? Is it sewer? Is it water? Like, what is happening? Yes, and redoing the road, and oh, okay. we're putting in bike lanes. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Yes. So the sewer infrastructure, this is part of the overall infrastructure plan where that stretch is being replaced. Yes. It, it, there's okay. no sense paving the road unless you do the pipes under the road. Right. And so that's, this is second phase of right, the first phase. Right, because you had done Dunsmere last year. No, this one was connected to Bevan Road in the oh, landfill. Oh, to Bevan. Oh, okay. That's where the money came from is okay. from the regional district okay. for this project. All right. Great. Now, how, and after this phase, is there another phase to complete or that's it? The, it will be done. We'll okay. be doing all new greenery along the way. Okay. And um, we're working on that at the present time. Awesome. And um, no, this will be it for a while for the main roads. Okay, <laughs> good. I'm sure everybody will be very happy about that. <laughs> yes, the businesses will be. Yeah. Yes. Now, we noticed coming into town that the museum is having some work done. Yes, they and are. that's looking like that's going to be pretty interesting. Accessibility. Mm -hmm. They're putting in a new ramp and new entranceway. And, oh, um, great. Yes, yes. And on Monday night at Council, Council approved the Culture Center, the colors for the Culture Center that's going to be all repainted as soon as the weather turns. Okay. So all we've right. got lots of projects going on right there now. There is. We just got word last week that the, our school is the fastest growing school in BC again. Mm, again. Again. Okay. The average age in Cumberland is 38. What? Yes, it's amazing. It's a, it's a wonderful feeling to walk downtown and see all the mums and babes and families walking. 38 yes, is yes. the average age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Were you shocked? Uh, not really, because we n I uh, noticed the noticed, change. Yeah. The change in the people, yes, absolutely. Considering that we were known for years as the retirement place. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as far as retirement as yes. you can get. The good part is that it's great to see people coming, but it's also yeah. making things unaffordable, too, for a lot of people. Mm. And we've got people bidding on houses now, mm. and it makes it very difficult for affordable okay. housing. Yeah. So we're looking at possible solutions to that. Okay. Well, that's good. Well, keep us posted on that. And I think, you know, that's a problem that they're now seeing, like, literally right across Canada. That is becoming a problem in the smaller communities because it's people in the big cities have been just priced out of the market. So mm -hmm. they're moving to the smaller communities. And like you said, you have huge numbers of families moving to this area. And, but they're also bringing with them some new vibrancy that I've noticed in the economic side because they're bringing little businesses. They're not only bringing businesses, but they're keeping our schools open. Yep. They're keeping our recreation facility open. Yep. We've got more programs going on now than we ever had. Yeah, and it's the I think it's up two hundred percent at this point. Wow, attendance at the recreation. Yeah, like they have programs like that we never thought of doing. <laughs> They do art in the local beer parlors at <laughs> night. Organized artwork, and you sip. That's awesome. While you're doing your art. Yes. So it's, it's there's fun. a name for that. Beer. Is it beer and brushes? Brushes and beer, beer or, or pints and it's pints circuits. and paints or yeah. something like paints and paints names. and pints. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, Leslie, thank you so much for your time today and bringing us up to speed on all the amazing things that are happening in Cumberland. And uh, try to hang on, because I don't think it's going to slow down anytime soon. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mary Ruth Harris. You're watching Up Front. We will be right back after this break. You're watching Up Front. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. Joining me now in front of the City of Courtney Town Hall, Mayor Larry Jangula. Good afternoon. I have noticed, good afternoon, I have noticed a huge amount of physical changes in the city. I was driving by the other day and I saw this massive mural which just looks spectacular. It is. We're very proud of it. And uh, the art community and the downtown merchants basically spearheaded it. Uh, the Courtney uh, Council uh, gave them $5,000 toward it. Okay. But you're right, it, it's on the Leung building, and, and it's very outstanding. You can see it from blocks away, mm -hmm. and it really changes the entire appearance of that building, quite frankly. And I understand that there is a plan to carry on and do more murals in yes, different buildings. We have we have it's a large be... number of smaller ones if you look around downtown. Okay. Many of them as part of our centennial that we finished last year. Yep. So you'll see some of them down here on 6th Street on the side of the cement going down. You see some of them in the downtown area. And we certainly are moving more and more toward that sort of form of 
celebrating our history, celebrating who we are, who we were. Through artistic expression. Correct. Yeah, okay. Now, the other uh, physical notice I've, no, that physical change that I've noticed is the roundabouts. There's mm -hmm. more of them. Yes. So what is, what's the, why, why are you guys doing that? I think roundabouts are, are a positive way to deal with many times uh, the problem intersections. Oh, and the okay. very first one we had was the intersection of Willemar and Cumberland Road. Right. And that intersection in the days when I was a police officer was actually quite dangerous and had a lot of very serious T-bone type, type oh, collisions. Okay. And we did a study and we put the roundabout in there and I know at first people were kind of looking at us sideways <laughs> and weren't really sure. But I, I assure you that it, it is, has improved the safety of that intersection by 90%. We, we still have the odd collision, but they're never a T-bone. They're right. simply a two-car sideswiping, which is far less impact than when you have someone going through an intersection and getting a nail. So you'll be doing more of those around yes. the city? Yes. We have one up near Costco okay. in, in that development, and we have some of them in the 3rd and 4th Street area. Okay. And uh, my personally think roundabouts are a better, safer way to do things. It also prevents vehicles being stopped at a light and backing up and idling. It keeps traffic flowing. Right. And, and okay. again, I, I talk about one of the areas that I've looked at, we, I've tried to get us to sort of put some more attention into is the intersection on Old Island Highway at Headquarters Road, yes. right in front of the Shell and Finnerons. Yes. It's another one of those intersections that doesn't line up straight, and it's, it's basically on an angle. So when you're looking, you have to kind of look back to see right. where the cars are. Boy, a roundabout there, that would change the flow of traffic in such a positive it way. Would. It would. So you guys are looking at that? We're looking at that. Okay. Now, I understand you got a little bit of grant money. Yes, we have some money uh, coming for a couple of very interesting projects. One of them is a grant from the federal government. Okay. And we have about $3.25 million coming in, and we will do uh, some improvements to 5th Street from, from basically Fitzgerald up to the railway tracks. And that okay. will mean replacing all the underground services, water lines, sewer lines, of course, resurfacing, uh, bike lanes. Um, the only thing that is still a little bit sad is we didn't get quite enough that we could replace the overhead lines, the, the power and, 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 uh, okay. and, and the phone lines. And, and it would be a lot more pleasing to the eye if we could get rid of them. Sure. But, it's, so but is it that, is an expensive process. And that's something that's on the radar, though, for that's the That's happening. The, the engineering is this year, and it'll start next year. Okay, great. And in addition to that, we received a one-third, one-third funding from the province and the federal government to, re to repaint and clean up Fifth Street Bridge, which has been one of my awesome. pet projects for years. Now, have you picked a color yet? I, I have a lot of suggestions. We haven't picked the color. Uh -huh. the, uh, the colors go from purple and, and onward. You can well it to <laughs> rainbow. To <laughs> well, rainbow but, uh, would be nice. Right, but I think that... Uh, It'll probably be a neutral color, blue or green, something like it okay. is. Something we that blends picked. in with the environment. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I've even had people tell me we should do it in camouflage. That way nobody <laughs> would know it was there if they flew over. So there you go. <laughs> now, uh, what is the time frame for that? That'll start next year. Okay. So in the spring, they'll start doing fall, the Fall, I would think. It'll begin, yes. In the fall, okay. And then another exciting project for all of the community is, of course, the opening of our new hospital, which will yep. happen this fall depending on, on how things work out, either September or October. Yep. It's actually completed inside and they're actually moving in staff and training staff as we speak. Yep. Um, so that'll be quite exciting. And in addition to that, we will also have the North Connector open, which is the bottom of Vanier Drive. They're, they're talking about right. traffic circles. Yes. There's another one planned there. Oh, okay. So there'll be a Great. traffic circle there and then okay. you'll, head, you'll head to the north and then you'll veer off to the new approach, which you can see okay. roughed in now. It's, it, yep. And they're built, actually putting the bridge for infrastructure right. as far as the supports yeah. in right now. Right. Well, and talk about the hospital, we're actually doing an hour-long special on the hospital uh, that will start airing, I believe, in uh, either September or October. Great. So there's so much to talk about there. There with is. The approach so, to the So you're right. There is, there is a lot happening in this community yeah. right now. Well, that's awesome. And well, also housing. We, we have about 184 uh, rental housing units that are coming on the market. Great. Uh, to assess a real serious okay. problem. And, we and also, is that the building down on Cliff? Yes, that's okay. part of it. Yes. Okay. And in addition to that, we, of course, have the Braidwood property, which is the supported housing. Okay. Uh, and uh, that'll be 44 units, and some of them will be... At, at subsidized rent similar to what we have at the Washington, okay. which will be, I think, about $500 a month. And then yep. some of them will be at about 10% below retail. So there'll okay. be a variety there, and there's a total of 44 units there. All right, great. Well, lots of positive stuff happening here in the city of Courtney. Mayor, thank you so much for thank your time you. today, and we'll catch up you again thank in you maybe so a couple All right. of months. Okay. You're watching Up Front. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. We'll be right back after this break.
You're watching Up Front. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. As I explained earlier in the show, we are out and about on location for this edition of Up Front. Instead of in the Campbell River studio, we were earlier at the Comox town down at the marina, the new buildings. And now we are standing, I don't even know what street this is. Harm, 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 harm. Harmston, Street. Harmston Street, Harmston and Street. right behind us is the school board building, but that's not why we're here. We're here because of this empty lot behind us. Bruce Joliffe, who is the, act, the current chair of the Comox Valley Regional District, is going to explain to us why the new regional district office is going to be built here. Thank you very much, Mary, Mary Ruth. So, yeah, we are currently in a building down on Comox the Comox Logging Road, mm -hmm. and at this point it's not adequate for our means. It, it was actually temporary quarters that we had to move into rather quickly after the previous headquarters we had on up in head, the previous, <laughs> no sorry, the previous uh, building we had on Headquarters Road. Oh, okay. That was uh, pronounced to be unsafe. Uh, oh, uh, okay. So we had to move fairly quickly and we moved down to these temporary quarters which we've been in for a decade or more, <laughs> which is <laughs> not typically... Not so temporary. <laughs> So um, what we want is a building that more adequately meets our needs. Currently, okay. we're leasing the space. So the oh, goal okay. is that this would be tax neutral. We'll move and right. have an asset, something that we can own. Right. And uh, we'll use the current monies we're using for the rental yes. to help finance as well as some savings we put aside. And right. this building will also be uh, built to si today's seismic standards so it can oh, be okay. used for emergencies. Yes. And it will be designed to be much more efficient and effective for our needs. Currently the building that we're in was not really designed for our use. Uh, it was mm -hmm. actually designed for multiple offices so okay. inside it's a bit of a labyrinth and, yes. and not very efficient for staff and not the best for our staff. Right. Now are you, uh, is the building going to take into effect like the LEED building standards and maybe very some much solar so. and Yeah, yes. All, and yeah. Energy efficiency okay. is key. Okay. Uh, most civics buildings nowadays pay close attention to that and we'll build We'll build to the to a fairly high level. We've got cost constraints, but we'll build yeah. within that as much as best we can within those cost constraints. Okay, and the difference between this building, uh, where this building will be located, and where it is currently, the one currently is in a floodplain. Correct, and that's another it's issue. It's so wet. <laughs> it gets very wet. In fact, there's a classic story of the chair one day trying to get in <laughs> and wading through the. <laughs> The water. <laughs> through the water <laughs> somebody took a photo of me trying to get into some place so, that was about two years ago during yeah. that flood <laughs> so when do you expect this build to take place uh, we're looking to uh, well we've got to go through the process of uh, borrowing money and that so our expectation yes. is to begin construction next year yes okay and how long would the build take about a year or yeah just about, about a year to year to 18 months yeah okay that's great thanks so much mr. Joliffe